Well, glad to have you listen today to the Bible Speaks. Now, we, uh, we started a lesson on unholy worship. And we're going to use as our text again today. We'll go back to the same text. In John chapter 4, begin reading in verse 19 about the Samaritan woman at the well that Jesus is dealing with. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is the Spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah is cometh, which is called Christ. When he has come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak of thee am he. Now here in this uh, particular text, we find uh, the word worship is used uh, eight times. We find the word worshiper is used once, uh, and then worshiped is used once. So ten times in this passage of scripture, uh, we, we've got the, the principle, the doctrine of worship. Uh, and, and God desires to be worshipped. Matter of fact, this passage says God seeks such to worship Him. So this morning, God is is looking at and He's trying to find true worshipers. We have a lot of stuff that goes on in our world today. It's probably always went on. Uh, we just live in this generation, see it up up close. We have a lot of worship and things that is called worship. Is it really worship? And you're going to find as we uh, look through. We looked last week. Satan wanted to be worshipped. Now, he wanted to be worshipped uh, as God uh, because of his pride, and that caused him to fall. We also looked at the fact in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians that Satan himself is an angel of light. And being an angel of light, uh, he desires worship, but he also desires to destroy the true worship of God. And if he can't get people to worship him outright, then what he does is he tries to get people to uh, worship God wrongly. And so uh, we looked at Cain last week. I'm going to read that again. It's going to springboard me into uh, some other issue, uh, other examples in the Bible of uh, people that was influenced by Satan uh, to try to worship God in a wrong manner, unholy worship. And it didn't go well for him. And yet, so you find in uh, Genesis 4, 1, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. And she again buried his brother Abel, and Abel was the keeper of the sheep, but Cain was the tiller of the ground. And in the process, in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. Abel, he also brought the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering, but unto Cain his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou dost well, shalt not be accepted, and thou dost not well. Sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And we find here that, that Cain got very angry because God did not do it Cain's way. And, and that's, that's a prideful thing. All false worship at some point in time has an element of pride in it, where that this is what I feel, this is what I think. That's how come that we make a great mistake if we uh, come before God and we say, well, well, this is the way I am, and this is the way I worship God. Uh, it, it doesn't matter what anybody else does. Well, it does matter. It matters what God wants. And Cain was very prideful, and he was trying to worship God instead of coming by faith through a humble heart that ne that is a repentant heart that realizes our sin and how that our righteousnesses are as filthy rags before his eyes. Uh, he came with an attitude of pride. Look how good I am. And he offered the works of his hands, and it was rejected. Now, let, let's get another uh, couple of uh, young men here in Leviticus chapter uh, number 10. In Levit Leviticus chapter 10, let me set the stage for this, if I may. Leviticus 10, uh, you have already had the tabernacle wilderness has just been set up for the first time. They've just set the tabernacle wilderness up. Uh, they have dedicated to the Lord. Uh, Aaron uh, and his four sons, um, they, David, and Mayu, Eleazar, and Ithmar uh, have been anointed as priests of this uh, just sanctified and set up tabernacle and wilderness. Now, everything that was done there was very, very, very specific as to what God wanted. Uh, everything was specific. Even the incense was to how it was to be made was very specific. 
Everything they did was, uh, their clothes was very specific. God gave, uh, gave commandments about everything. And he gave commandments about the offerings. And he gave commandments about uh, what was to be offered and the incense. Now, they're still in this first week of dedication. I want you to think about this now. And chapter 10 of the book of Leviticus, they're still in that first week. They've been dedicated. They're not allowed to leave the tabernacle for a week. They're, they're doing what God has told Moses to do to dedicate them. And so we pick up in chapter 10, verse 1. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Well, what, a, what an interesting passage and what an awful scene. You have two young men here that have been consecrated by God to a great service to lead the nation of Israel in their worship of Almighty God. And for some reason, these two young men decide that the way that God said do it was not right. So they took their censers and they put fire in it and then they put incense on it. And the fire they put in it was the, a strange fire. It was strange in, in the fact that it was not what God wanted there. The incense was not what God wanted there. And when they offered that before the Lord... Then God killed them. Well, what a what what a quick judgment for sin. And what was the sin? They did not kill someone. They did not molest a child or rape a woman or commit adultery or what did they do? They did not worship God the way God said worship them him. It was a strange fire. Well, we have a lot of strange fire in our land today. People are calling it from God. And if God killed everybody today like he did they day in the bayou, uh, boy, there'd be a lot of folk die today. You see, God is a very, God of order, very specific God. And he specifically told them what to do, and they didn't do it. Now, I want you to notice as we continue reading this passage, uh, how that not only did they die for their sin of false worship, of unholy worship, I want you to notice how that God dealt uh, with their father and their two brothers about mourning over them. And we'll see that God is very specific about worship. So we start in verse three. Then Moses said to Aaron, this is that the Lord spake saying, I'll be sanctified in them that come nigh to me. And before all the people, I'll be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Can you imagine the heartbreak of Aaron? He is watching his uh, two of his boys killed by judgment from God. And then God says to him, Hey, Aaron, uh, you, you got to hold your peace here. And what do you mean by hold his peace? Verse 4. And Moses called Mishael and Elzaphan, the sons of Uzzel, the uncle of Aaron, and said to them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp as Moses had said. And Moses said to Aaron and to Eleazar and to Ithmar his sons, Uncover not your heads, neither rend your clothes, lest you die, and lest wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, be well the burning which the Lord hath kindled. And you shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest you die. For the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you, and they did according to the word of Moses. Now, once you notice that there wasn't even allowed to mourn the death of his two sons or two brothers, the death of their brothers. Uh, they, they were in this process of the anointing oil had been put upon them. They'd been sanctified and set apart. There was this true worship of God. It was very orderly. It was very specific. And God killed two boys that tried to change the order of what God did. Now, I recognize this is Old Testament. I recognize why God did all of this was a pointing to Calvary. I understand that. But there is a principle here today that you and I need to pay attention to. That God is always a God of order. 
God is always looking for things to be done the way God wants it to be done. And God never leaves anything up to us to decide what we want to do. It is always what God has commanded to be done. So we've seen some young men that have died today, and we've seen Cain that rebelled and is in hell. We see Nadab and Abihu that died for unholy worship. Well, this thing of true worship is important in the eyes of God. It needs to be important in our eyes. Now, I'll pick up one other thing today about worship, and then we'll be close for today. In verse number 8 of Leviticus 10, it says, And the Lord spake unto Aaron, and saying, Drink not wine or strong drink down to thy sons with thee when you go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations that you put, may put difference between holy and unholy and between unclean and clean, that you may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken to them by the hand of Moses. I want you to notice now he gives very strict commandments to them that they're not allowed, as they are worshiping, to drink any kind of uh, beverage, wine, strong drink, anything that might have the possibility of inf fermentation that would make them drunk. They were to put difference between the clean and the unclean, the holy and the unholy. That is what our worship ought to do. Our worship ought to be something that separates things from the world. It ought not to be like the world. It ought not to look like the world. It ought not to smell like the world. It ought not to act like the world. There ought to be a difference in our worship. And people ought to see the worship of God is a different worship than the things of the world. It ought to be clean instead of unclean. It ought to be holy instead of unholy. And the truth of the matter is, we have a lot of unholy worship today that is trying to imitate the world. Boy, God never, never had Israel imitate the world in his, in worship of him. It was always sanctified, set apart, so they could see they were worshiping a holy God. Thank you for listening today to The Bible Speaks.